Hi everyone, it's Pastor Wagner. Today we're going to talk about irresistible grace. So the last few weeks we've looked at total depravity. We showed how man was dead in sins. Uh, There's nothing he could do uh, to get himself out of that condition. In that condition he couldn't hear the gospel, he couldn't believe the gospel, uh, he couldn't repent, he couldn't follow Christ, he couldn't do anything. He was spiritually dead and had no spiritual capacity to do any spiritual thing like that. And then we looked at unconditional election, how God elects or chooses before the foundation of the world unconditionally, sinners of his choosing whom he will save. And then we looked at limited atonement, how that number of people that he elects is limited in number. And now I guess the question would come up, well, how is a person that is dead in sins, even if he's elected and chosen by God, how is God going to give him eternal life or how is the man going to be saved uh, out of that condition if he's dead and if he can't hear or believe or he can't meet any condition that was given to him and that's where irresistible grace comes in um, the foundational text the, the prime text that I'm going to use this morning is John 5 in verse 25 and this really states how this comes about because this has to be a sovereign act of God. If this person is going to be changed inwardly, he has to be given a new spirit. There has to be a resurrection that happens, a spiritual resurrection, where that, that spirit that's in him that is dead in trespasses and sins, that spirit has to be renewed within him. And Jesus spoke about this in John 5, 25, when he said, Verily I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is. And that's an important point, and now is. So the hour was coming, but it was happening at this time, at the time that he was speaking. The hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. I want you to notice a couple things about that. First of all, he says the hour is coming, and now is. So this was something that was a present reality as Jesus was speaking. This was happening at that time. It was coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice, not the word of God, but the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. So they that hear this voice of the Son of God, not might live or could live, would live if they would fulfill a condition, if they would, if they would respond to it positively, they shall live, Jesus says. So it's going to happen. Now, some people may look at this and think this is speaking of the resurrection of the body at the, at the last day. But if you keep reading in verse 28 and 29, we find that that is not the case. Uh, verses 28 and 29, Jesus said, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming... Notice he doesn't say, and now is, but the hour is coming. This is in the future yet. In the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. You see the difference in these two texts? Number one, this was future. This was not, and now is, but this is the hour is coming. And then he specifies, they that are in the graves. In verse 25, he's not talking about people in the graves. He's talking about the dead the spiritually dead. If you take, if you compare that with what is said in Ephesians 2, um, this is elsewhere referred to as a quickening. This is by the voice, not by the word of God. This is not by the preached word of God that the preacher says. This is by the voice of the Son of God. In the same way that God commanded the light to shine out of darkness, we're told, in the same way that God said, let there be light, God created the heaven and the earth, in that same way, by the voice, new life comes. The soul, the spirit, is resurrected. He says in Ephesians 2 and verse 1, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and in sins. Quicken is to make alive. He says, And you hath he quickened who were dead. See, they were spiritually dead. They weren't physically dead, these Ephesians, but they were spiritually dead. And there's a good, uh, good example of this back in the book of Ecclesiastes, not Ecclesiastes, Ezekiel, pardon me. Back in the book of Ezekiel, and he says there in Ezekiel 11 and verse 19, uh, very curious, back here, there was this, just this kind of in the middle of this prophecy was a picture of the new birth or a statement of the new birth. And he says there in, I'm sorry, in Ezekiel 11 and verse 19 and 20, he says, God says, and I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit within you and I will, get, and I will take the stony heart out of your flesh or out of their flesh and will give them a heart of flesh, that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. God says he's going to take 
that old stony heart out of their flesh and he's going to give them a new heart of flesh. He will, give, he will put a new spirit within them. And that's exactly what Jesus is talking about. When he said the dead would hear the voice of the Son of God and they that, they that hear shall live, he's going to take that old dead spirit out. He's going to quicken it. He's going to regenerate it. And I'll give you one more text along this line. This same thing, this quickening, um, being born again is another term for it. It's also called regeneration. And this is what the Spirit does. By the, the Spirit of God, by the voice of Christ, gives somebody a new spirit. In Titus 3 and verse 5, it says, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. To regenerate, to regenerate means to create new. So he takes that old dead spirit that can't hear, can't believe, can't understand the gospel. He takes that dead spirit. He takes it out. He gives them a new spirit. He regenerates it. He resurrects that old spirit. And now they have a new spirit. And now they can freely know the things that are given to them of God because they're no longer natural men. That's what you call irresistible grace. It's not by the gospel. When the gospel is preached to a sinner who's dead and trespasses and sins, it's foolishness to him, and we've already seen that. Uh, in some of these videos, the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto them which are saved is the power of God. And that's in uh, 1 Corinthians 1.18. So once that new spirit is given them, then when they hear the gospel, then they can believe it and they have the ability to believe it because the new spirit has been given to them. So I hope this is uh, helpful to clear that up. And next time we will talk about the last phase, which is the preservation of the saints. We'll talk about how God preserves his saints once he elects them and predestinates them, and once he gives them eternal life by the voice of the Son of God, then he preserves them unto all eternity. So thanks for listening, and I'll see you again next week.